Now some further words about the uh, hammers on these clocks. This one's a session, this one's the Ingram here. The hammer in the resting position should not be coming in contact with the bell or the gong or the rod, whatever the case may be with your clock. Uh, in its resting position, the head of the hammer should be like an eighth of an inch away from the rod, gong, or bell. So when the clock strikes and the hammer actually falls, it actually falls on a stop and momentarily flexes forward past the stop to strike and then rebounds back. And the stop can be a pin or some metal object or part of the movement plate itself. Now let's look at this uh, sessions movement plate here. And you can see that there's on the uh, arbor here for the hammer arbor that where the hammer is connected to, there's a like a stop pin up here which comes out the movement plate here so that when the hammer goes back you can see the pin move back see and then when it goes forward it acts as a stop but you can see the flex in the hammer which would go forward and hit the bell or the gong and then come back so in order for it to make a good strike you need to have that flex and then you also have to have a stop because you don't want the hammer actually hitting the gong or the bell and staying there because then it'll make a, a horrible sound basically. Uh, another thing that we need to talk about is the uh, you can increase or decrease the volume of your strike by increasing or loosening the, uh, the, the hammer spring pressure. Now the hammer spring is this spring right in here that you can see. Let's see if we can get a better close-up view here. Here it is, right here. It's this little spring wire here that's attached to the hammer to give it some pressure and some flex. Increased pressure will make it more difficult for the strike system to operate, so then more power would be needed to work against the spring pressure. So you, you don't want it to be too strong. Now here's the, let's look at the pressure on this one. This one's actually a lot weaker, you can see, because I'm pulling it straight up without the aid of gravity it's just giving a little bit of pressure so it's not as strong of a strike but that doesn't necessarily mean it's not going to be loud and here you can see on the movement plate itself where the pin stop pin on the arbor of the hammer comes in contact with the plate and acts as the stop now let's, one other thing I wanted to talk about is coiled gongs. Now to repair a coiled gong rod it's best done by replacing it from one of the clock material suppliers. Trying to make one of these is not worth the trouble and takes a lot of skill and it would be very difficult to do this from scratch. Uh, now the process of the gong in terms of making it is this is steel coiled gong wire. It's flat steel wire that's coiled followed by heating to a bright red and then quickly quenching in water and as you know this process is called hardening or hardens the steel and you should be familiar with the hardening process from our previous repair demonstrations and then finally it's polished with an emery cloth and then blued in, in the heat uh, this, I can still see the bluing on, on this one, it may not be real obvious in the camera but uh, they are blued in the heat and that's how they're, they're uh, prepared or how they were prepared at the factory